Profiles in Cinemania, Catherine Deneuve. During the latter half of the 20th century, any time a film director found himself in need of an actress whose eroticism was only surpassed by her emotional inaccessibility and whose accent only sharpened both those traits to a keen edge, Catherine Deneuve got a phone call. Reports that her nickname, the Ice Maiden, upset her so much that she plunged the realm into a season of supernatural ice until her eventual defeat at the hands of a plucky band of children from our own world are unreliable at best. Catherine Deneuve comes from a very dramatic family. Both of her parents were actors. She was born in 1943 as Catherine Fabienne Dorliac and adopted her mother's maiden name as her stage name. She made her film debut in 1957 at the age of 13, and she co-starred with her sisters occasionally during her early career before her big break in 1964 on Jacques Demy's The Umbrellas of Schorberg. Deneuve made a name for herself by portraying icy, mysterious women who were also very beautiful. Sometimes she was mysteriously beautiful, while at others she would be more beautifully mysterious. She soon caught the eye of the great directors of the day and starred in some of their seminal works, including Roman Polanski's Repulsion, a tale of a mysteriously beautiful, or perhaps beautifully mysterious, schizophrenic murderess with a phobia of sex, and Louise Bunuel's Belle du Jour, where she played an emotionally distant housewife who takes up prostitution to alleviate her boredom. The early career of Deneuve was largely a series of femme fatale roles in thrillers or ambiguous romances. It was all very French in New Wave, and a clear inspiration to other ice queens of the silver screen in the decades that followed. <clears throat> Sharon Stone. <laughs> Deneuve aroused the attention of American audiences in crime drama Hustle with Burt Reynolds in 1975, and again in 1983 when she starred as a bisexual vampire, Miriam Blaylock, and Tony Scott, The Hunger, alongside David Bowie and Susan Sarandon. This role brought her a noticeable lesbian following, especially among queer goths, as well as anyone else who has ever had a desire to lick Susan Sarandon's elbow. The 1980s saw Deneuve start to gain awards recognition. She picked up France's highest film honor, a César Award, naming her as Best Actress for her work on Truffaut's The Last Metro. This trend continued through the 90s. Her performance in 1992's Indochine earned her an Academy Award nomination for Best Actress. And she earned two more Cesar Award wins in 93 and 96 for her work on My Favorite Season and Thieves by André Tachiné. Through the 2000s, she was nominated for five more Cesars and won an EFA for Eight Women by François Osson, again all for Best Actress. Catherine Deneuve was not just an extremely talented actress, she was also a singer, model, and producer. Deneuve's breakout film, The Umbrellas of Cherbourg, first showcased her musical talent. She also sang duets with Joe Cocker, Malcolm McLaren and Elaine Souchon, and she starred alongside Bjork in Lars von Trier's Dancer in the Dark, which itself won a Palme d'Or at Cannes. She modeled for Playboy in 1963 and 1965, and later in the 1970s, she became the face of Chanel No. 5, among other high-profile brands. As one might expect, Deneuve's private life became the subject of much tawdry public gossip. Although she was only married once to photographer David Bailey between 1965 and 1972, thereafter she had a series of live-in boyfriends that included a director, an actor, a cinematographer, and a television tycoon. Surprisingly, only one of these was Italian, the legendary Marcello Mastroianni. Since her breakup with Pierre Lesquieu in 1991, she has kept her relationships out of the public eye. This fact, combined with her filmography, which includes five films where she kissed other women, has led to speculation about her sexual orientation. I'm sure her goth lesbian fans would approve. Although Catherine Deneuve has never confirmed the rumors that she was bisexual, the fact remains that she has been a fierce political activist for the rights of women and the gay community since the 1970s. She publicly outed herself as having had an illegal abortion with her signature on the Manifesto of 343 in 1971, which pressed the French government to grant women access to safe legal reproductive health care. In 2007, she signed a petition protesting the misogynist treatment of Ségolène Royal, one of France's few female presidential candidates to date. In 2011, Deneuve and other French celebrities asked the President of France to propose a vote at the UN General Assembly that would have decriminalized homosexuality worldwide. Regardless of her sexuality on or off screen, Catherine Deneuve has made an impression on the world with both her performances and her political activism. 
Treat yourself to some French filmic cuisine tonight by working through her back catalogue. But don't ever fool yourself into thinking Catherine Deneuve is just a great actress. She is a woman who has seized life in all its aspects and devoured it hungrily. This has been another profile in Cinemania. This episode was written and performed by Andrea Palladino. Mixing, mastering, and sound design by Ethan Ireland. Music by Carl Casey at White Bat Audio. Profiles in Cinemania is a product of the Cinemania Society, LLC.